Hello! Welcome to episode four of Who Does That? Who Does That? A weekly podcast where we discuss a bunch of things that may or may not be related to one another. My name is Madeline. <laughs> I'm, I'm Nina. And, and this evening we're going to be discussing the joys and pains of customer service jobs. So, What it's like to be a gear in the capitalist machine. Yes. Uh, the, the wonders of food service and retail jobs. Minimum yeah. wage, sexual workplace harassment. Um, Scheduling. Working for 10 hours or 12 hours without a break. Um, just general schedule. Mail entitlement, schedule. Yeah, I mean, there's... There's so many schedules. There's probably pause. a lot of different categories um, that we could discuss. Yeah, try but, working for a 24-hour restaurant and not getting a 2 a.m. shift. You worked for a 24-hour restaurant? You worked for Waffle House? IHOP. IHOP is 24 hours? Some of them are. The one well, the one near my house was. I can understand when you go to Waffle House all hours of the day. But I not have, IHOP. IHOP just seems spooky Let at me tell you, when you make 2.13 an hour, it's really not worth being there. Because you get no, no tips. No tips. Yeah. Like, how are you supposed to make minimum wage? Much less make any money when you make 2.13 an hour plus tips in the middle of the night at a restaurant no one goes to. That's like, that sounds like some horror movie fuel. Oh, it was. Being in IHOP at the witching hour... Oh, we got oh, and uh, half All of our employees were half of our employees were convicts, yourself included. Yes. Wait, why did you work there? Was I that your know. first job? No. What was your first job? Justice. <laughs> Justice for girls. Oh, and we still don't have that, do we? No, actually. What made you want to work at Justice? Um. I didn't want to work for Justice, but I needed but a job. Hiring. Yeah, I needed a job, and they didn't care if you had a retail experience, because no one wants to work there. See, now I know why you're so bitter. It all makes sense, because well, your first job was Justice. I, I was bitter before that, and that's why I quit. And they were like, oh, you should be cheery and happy. And I was like, no. I didn't want to sell sparkly things to little girls. Actually, I didn't want to sell sparkly things to their moms, because let's face it, yeah. they had the real power. Yeah, I remember my mom going into Justice with me and, like, telling me what I should buy. But I Your never wanted to go there. Your mom would shop at Justice. There. Yeah. Your mom would buy the things there. But you know what? I think they had webkins there. Yeah, that's my favorite that thing to buy. Yeah, that was why I would go in. Um, so that was your first job. You know what my first job was? Hmm. Jason's Deli. No! Yeah, that was, that was an armpit of an experience. I mean, technically, my first job was tutoring special ed kids, but that was, like, a once-a-week thing if the mm-hmm. parents needed it, so I don't really count that. Um, so, yeah, working at Jason's Deli, wow. Um, I was, like, I wasn't, um, let's just say I was not disillusioned by the world yet. So I came yeah. in there fresh-faced, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, full makeup, beautiful done hair. Jason's deli. That you don't I need to wear squashed makeup? under a baseball cap oh, and a ponytail for my shift cap. during that sweaty lunch hour. It's funny. I actually don't look bad in a baseball cap. I thought I, I would. I don't see you wearing a You don't cap. see it, but it works. Until you put You've it gotta on. You've got to believe it. The magic it. The magic is there. Uh, um, anyway. There's so many different hats you could wear that would look better. Is that... Are you speaking figuratively or literally? Oh? <laughs> yeah, Jason's Deli. It's funny because my, my ex-boyfriend is the one that got me the job. <laughs> uh, and, it's, and we're still friends. Like, we're civil. But um, basically, like, I didn't understand what workplace sexual harassment was until I was working at Jason's Deli. Because mind you, this was my first job. And I was maybe 16, 17. Like, I wasn't even in college yet. Of course not. I was, like, senior in high school. I already graduated high school. This is end of the summer. Dude, I was, like, a freshman in high school. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, Where was I going with this? Okay, yeah, so the manager was, like, this real greasy guy. Bald, Mm -hmm. sparse facial hair, pale, sweaty, just a very, like, kind of whispery voice like this. Like, kind of lifty. To make you lean in. Yeah. 
Um, and he was very open about his, like, desire for a- an Asian woman. <gasps> and, like, uh, I remember very vividly, like, I would come in and he would say, um, you know, your hair just looks so beautiful today. Or you look so good without makeup on. And, uh, try to, like, touch me and stuff. And, like, I didn't know that it was wrong, so I was just like, uh, okay, thank you, I guess. Uh-huh. But I eventually had to leave that job because, so, like, he was making me uncomfortable. Another woman that worked there was just straight up bullying me. And another guy that worked there was also saying mean shit. Like, he would say, like, you know, I really feel bad for your boyfriend based on the way you dress. And, like, really mean shit like that. And I was like, well, thanks, Jeremy. You're no prize either. You work at Jason's Deli, (laughs) Jeremy. He was so ugly and so mean. Uh, So, like, I I know now. Yeah, I know now he was projecting. But I stopped working at Jason's Deli because uh, I accidentally spilled honey mustard all over. Like, all, I'm talking all, you know, there's like a glass window over the salad bar. All over. Because you have to put all the salad dressings on top while you're cleaning the salad bar. And I just accidentally dumped, so there was like a waterfall of honey mustard all no. over the side. <laughs> yeah, so. And then you walked out. Yeah, so I stopped working there, and I started Wait, working. Did you at, really walk out after you spilled the honey mustard? No, just but like it, it was. Just your hands in there and walked out. It was shortly after that because I I was moving to the dorms for school anyway. All right. And then I started working at Victoria's Secret. Oh baby. Um, that. You know, I, I really don't have too many bad things I can say about that job because it was, it paid me well. I was good at it. It was just like, the psychological environment was just bristling. Catty fucking bitches. Yeah, it was really toxic, and it wasn't all of them. Like some of my empl- some of the employees, some of my coworkers, I really liked them, but some of my managers were just rotten to the core. Like they would schedule me until ten. And then say around eleven thirty when there's a pile of thongs all over the ground. I'm not exaggerating. Oh, I believe it. So the, here's a PSA, guys. When you buy underwear from Victoria's Secret, please wash it because not only has someone probably tried it on, but when we fold at Victoria's Secret, we dump all the drawers out onto the floor sometimes when there's not enough room, and then we sort through them like a fucking salad. Uh-uh. Cause it pretty much looks like leaves. A pile of g strings and thongs, <laughs> lacy, stringy. Like it looks like a spinach salad. What the fuck? Um, and yeah, at eleven thirty, they would say to me, Madeline, don't you want to stay and help your teammates? And I'd say, No, I haven't. I have an eight a.m. class tomorrow. I think I'm good. Um, so eventually, I left for that and similar reasons. And then, <sighs> then I started working at a steakhouse. And, oh, my God, I missed that job. I got 14 to $16 an hour <gasps> because I was hosting, but I also got tips. Nice. So it was, like, very, very cushy. But, again, it was like I was back at Jason's Deli. I don't know what it is about food service jobs, but, like, the greasiest people work there. I mean, it's like gre- think grease, so greasy? Grease attracts grease. God damn it. And the manager. Again, it's always the fucking manager with me. Why do, why do people that suck? Have authority. Well, no, here's the funny part is like, I should have known from the get go because during my first interview with this man, he said to me, Your eyes are mesmerizing me. Oh, that is a creepy. grown man saying this to a 20 year old girl that he just That's hired. That's creepy as fuck. It's inappropriate. Yeah. And I was like, Uh, thanks, dude. And then, like, I remember another time it was like late, like, we were closing the restaurant and I had to print. Uh, menus for the brunch the next day and I'm sitting in the chair like in the office where he, the safe is and he comes in to like make a deposit and he's like damn you know tonight was a long night I was like yeah it was stressful and he comes up to me and puts his hand on top of my head and starts stroking my hair and says oh Madeline you work so hard no! and, and I just I just froze I was like what the fuck do I do and I just waited and waited, and finally he left, and I was like, "Oh, what the?" What? And That's then like, so fucking that crazy. wasn't even the worst thing. There were other people that worked there, like servers, who would say shit to me. Like one of the bus boys just came up to me, no prelude, and he was like, "You're a freak, aren't you?" 
And I didn't know what ah! to, I didn't know what to say. It was like I mean, yes. Because if I said yes, that would be weird. And if I said no, that would be a lie. <laughs> and, and I remember like we Fuck, we were I wasn't um, really at home a lot during like the, the holidays. So I was working. I think it was it was either Christmas, New Year's. I think it was New Year's. And I don't know how, but some of the wait staff were drunk. Or at least they were acting like they were. And one of the servers, who was a much older man, like 50 or 60, like, um, he'd been helping me out because he knew I was having a hard time. And he, like, got me birthday cards and stuff. And he would give me money. Like, he mm, was like... That's crazy. I know. Uh, I'd admit again, I didn't... I wasn't really thinking about this. And... I mean, you want to believe that people are nice and good. And, and so, to, so, like, one night we were really busy. I was like, you know, thank you for your help. Is there anything I can help you with? And he was like, well, you can go in the back and make out with me a little bit. And I was like, uh, 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 no, <laughs> I, my jaw just dropped. And he was like, oh, I'm just playing. And I was like, yeah, I'm sure you are. He was not just playing. Let me tell you that. Anyways. Um, yeah, that was when I was cute. Um, oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> It just gets worse from here, though, because then I started working at the Hard Rock Cafe. Ah, that was... That was not that was absolutely terrible. You've told me about that one. That one sounds no bueno. Yeah, because, you know, Gabby was working there with me, too, at the time. And um, we actually, I think between her and me, we got at least two to three people fired for huh. inappropriate comments made to us. Because I remember I someone... I they're not allowed to allow that shit, like... I mean, ideally. But, like, someone came first. up to her... And I wasn't there this day. I think she just came home, like, traumatized and told me. But one of our coworkers came up to her during the shift and was like, Oh, Gabby, when am I going to see a nice pregnant belly on you? Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> she was, like, 20? Uh, at the time, she was probably 22. Maybe 23. Still. Yeah. Gross, right? And then someone... I was friends with, with some of the people there as well. And there was this one host that me and Gabby were both close with because he trained both of us. Uh-huh. And one night I was like, um, I, I, I just don't have money for a lift. I don't want to take the train. It's 2 a.m. Like, can you please give me a ride home? And he was like, yeah, no problem. And um, I, maybe this is my fault, but like, you know, I was kind of just speaking out of anxiety. But I was like, you know, you're not going to like, hurt me or anything right and um he was like no i was planning on uh raping you and murdering you and then putting your body in the trunk of my car and i started crying like immediately uh, that's hard to tell if he's joking exactly and he drove me home and nothing happened but the next time i saw him um he was like are you still upset at me about that and i was like i mean yeah kind of he was like, oh my god, women are so sensitive. It's like, you made the joke. It's your fault. And I I was trying so hard not to be upset, but I started crying again. He was like, come on, you're going to get me fired. Don't make a scene. Don't make a fuss about this. And our manager saw what was happening. And she was oh, like, no. is everything okay? I was like, not really. And I told her what happened. And um, he ended up leaving anyway. Um, I don't think he was fired. But the guy that said the pregnant belly thing to Gabby was fired for that. Uh-huh. And then one guy, That's just weird. one guy wanted me to repair his jeans because he knew I could sew, and I was like, "Sure, uh, you know, give them to me, and I'll see what I can do." And they were not valuable jeans; they were like Ralph Lauren or, or Tommy Hilfiger or something. Um, and I've had them at my house for a while because, like, he wouldn't like let me. He wouldn't get back to me about like a price for what he needed done. And so finally one day I was like, hey, like, I'm going to fix your pants. Can you just give me, like, 25, 30 bucks? And he was like, no, that's way too much. And I was like, dude, that's really not a lot for what you're asking me to do. It's like a custom order. And he was like, you crazy bitch. I know where you live. I'm going to kill you. Like, over a pair of jeans? Yeah. And I was terrified because he did know where I live because he dropped the pants off there. So I threw the pants out my front door, I locked the door, and I sat in my living room and cried, and I called my oh boyfriend my at the time to come and get me, because I was really afraid this guy was going to come kill me. Um, oh my god, no. So that was uh, my adventures at Hard Rock. Um, moving forward, moving to present day. 
Square, where we both, both Nina and I work at a, a high-end vintage resale store, which I really like that job for what it's worth. It's a small women-owned business, and I get to work with fashion history, which is what I'm good at. And uh, it's, you know, some of the people that come in are, like, great and, like, really funny and nice. And some, and some people, of them are absolutely terrible. Some of them are just literally not there mentally. Like, their brain, like, foot fungus guy. <laughs> oh, my God, the fucking foot fungus. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> okay, we'll give the context of this story first. This guy, okay. So, this guy comes in, and we're super not busy that day. Um, there's, like, maybe one guy in the store I just opened, and I opened, like, 15 minutes early, and, um, this guy comes in, and he's screaming and hollering (laughs) about how he worked all night moving (laughs) furniture or something, like, cleaning out a house, or I'm not quite sure what, um, and he needed new clothes, like, he was looking for pants and shoes, I guess, like, whatever he was doing, construction, whatever, I'm not really sure. Um, cause he was not talking, talking coherently, just like me right now. <laughs> um, like he had gotten his pants and his shoes dirty. So he wanted to buy some more. Now to reiterate, vintage and high end resale, not Goodwill. Yeah, not, we are not Goodwill. Not, not a $6 pair of jeans. Like probably 20 or 30 at least. At least. And a lot of times we have, like, slacks and khakis and vintage, like, high-waisted men's pants. We don't have a lot of just regular jeans. Yeah. Not honestly. not very many. Um, so bring us jeans. Yeah. Um, but this man goes over there to look. He go and he's looking at shoes, too. And we have, like, some nice, like, Nikes and things like that. But they're priced, like... Low for Nike. Low for Nike, but still, like, $39, $49. Generally, we do less than half of the retail price but it depends on the on the item and the brand yeah but i think this particular pair of shoes was 39.99 they were and eh. before tax they were kind of cool were, i guess they, they had were, fake raindrops on them yeah there were red and black nike airs with like um, but clear they were high resin top on them. and they were nice they were they were nice i guess for men's shoes they were interesting um but this man wants to buy this pair of shoes first of all mhm we're resale. Mm-hmm. We buy off the street. Yeah, it's so it's all used. Um, this man came in and said, uh, I need this pair of shoes in a size 11. <laughs> I was like, sir, that is the only size we have the shoes. You're going to have to go on the Nike website for that because we don't have it. I was like, sir, this pair of shoes comes in a size 12. Like, it's the only one we have. It's the only pair we have. Do you still want to wanna buy them? He was like, yes. He was like, but I'll give you, I think he said like twenty nine ninety nine for them. I was like, sorry, sir, prices are non-negotiable. We have these signs posted Everything everywhere. is marked as is. I was like, I don't care if the... We have too many signs. I think that's why no one reads them, because they're just inundated with signs. Yeah. Yeah. No, I tried to tell everyone that, but no one listens to The me. people involved. Um, but anyway, this man start, tries to start negotiating with me. I was like, sorry, sir, you can't do that. And so... <laughs> you can't negotiate with You me. can't negotiate. So I picked out a pair of pants that were like $16 and this pair of shoes that were 39 before tax. And then he was like, you know what? These pants don't... I, and I asked him, I was like, do you want to try on these pants? He was like, no. And then when he found the shoes, he was like, sorry, these these pants are too tight. I'm like, sir, do you want to try them on? He was like, no, I know they won't fit. And I was like, alrighty, that's fine. Uh, so this is why you don't open early. <laughs> well, like the guy just like walked in and I was like, fine, 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 fine. Um, cause I was ready to open, like the, mm-hmm. the, everything was done that I needed to do. This is fucking man was crazy. Um, anyway, he had thrown, when he walked in initially screaming, um, <laughs> it's always, they're always screaming. They're always screaming. He threw a bunch of money on the counter and like just emptied his pocket. So there was some like gum, Used a lot of ticket. No, luckily. Um, but just, like, a bunch of shit, including a bunch of crumpled up money. So I was like, does this man even have money to pay for anything? Like, this is a bunch of ones. So I I started to look at it. There were some 20s in there, so I was like, okay, I'm going to give this man the benefit of the doubt and just say he's crazy, but we'll still purchase something. Um, He'll probably complain about prices, but he'll still purchase something. Um, 
And sure enough, he bitched about the prices and, and all like that. Um, for those of you who have not worked retail or had not had this atrocious experience. Which, if you're our age, I'm sure you have at this point. Yeah. At but least just, once. Just saying, if you've ever worked for a small business like this, or if you haven't worked for a small business like this, uh, something you should know is people will come in with like a hand, like a, a some cash visible. Oh yeah, like, this is a tactic. This, this is, is a, a tactic. stealing tactic this that I now scheme. know about. This is a scheme. So they show you cash, like oh I have money to pay. Or they'll pay. just walk around with it in their hand. That's or what happened just, to me. Yeah, or throw it up on the counter, and they're still trying to steal because then they're gonna grab it and be like, sorry, I didn't find anything. Meanwhile, they have ten shirts stuffed in their backpack exactly, or under their yeah. shirt. Or they'll go in the dressing room and, like, rip tags off things. I don't know. Um, so I was, I had my eye on this guy. Uh, and there was someone else in the store, and Cole had brought me coffee. And, like, things were happening, but I was just like, I'm not taking my eyes off him. Like, this is not mm-hmm. happening to me. And he noticed. What? That I was, like, staring at him. <laughs> mm. Oh, God. Because um, he kept asking me things, and I was like, no, sir, I don't have those shoes in another size. No, sir, you can't negotiate the price. No, sir, like... Those shoes are forty nine ninety nine. He like picked up several pairs of shoes, and he kept asking, "What are these?" And holding up a pair, a, a different pair of Nikes, and I was like, "Sir, they're a pair of Nike fucking shoes. Like, read the side of the he's, shoe." He's come in before. I know who you're talking about. He's the one that came in when me and Gwen were there, and he was like, "Y'all got white powder all all over all your stuff." And I didn't understand. I was like, what do you mean? Like, we, we Have clean. Have you seen him again? Kick him out. We launder and steam all of our clothes before we shelve them if there's an issue. And uh, he was like, no, no, it, it's making me itch. Something's making me itch. And my manager, without missing a beat, is like, well, crack makes you itch. <laughs> <laughs> I love him so much. But anyway. Anyway, continue To story. finish the story, this man tries to buy this pair of shoes and so, like, I'm ringing him up, and he hands me the... And I watched him count it out, the forty nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. So I turn around to grab his $0.42 cents in change, and I pick up the cash, and I'm like, sir, this is only 24 It was, like, $44 of tax. Um, or, like, 43 and some change. So anyway, he gave me $44, and I turn around to get his change. And I turn back around, and I'm like, sir, this is $24. He's like, no, it's $44. I'm like... Sir, there's a 20 and four ones. That's $44. $24. And he tried to fight me about, like, he was like, oh, I gave you the money. What'd you do with it? I just ate it. I was feeling I was hungry. Like, yeah, I just, like, absorbed it, up my it ass. through my skin. I used it as a tampon. I thought paper would be absorbent, you know? Yeah. So this man is, like, harassing me. I, I gave you the money. Well, I'm just going to take my money back and take the shoes for free because of this harassment. Oh, my and God. all of this shit. And I was like, sir, no, you're not. I'm not letting you take the shoes for free. Like, I'll call the police. Yeah. And he sees the camera that's behind me. And he's like... One of seven. <laughs> One of seven. I'm like, I don't think you realize how, how captured you are. Um, and he was like, well, you, you got cameras? And I was like, yeah, we have cameras. And he was like, well, we'll check the cameras. Because I gave you the money. And I'm like, sir, I'm not going to do that. Because I, I, I'm sure you just... And I tried to be nice about it because he had, like, money, again, crumpled dollar bills all over the counter. And I was like, are you sure you just didn't pick it up by mistake? Like, trying to give the man the chance to be like, oh, sorry, I must have picked that up. Of course, fucking not. (laughs) So this man continues uh, trying to convince me that he paid. And so finally he just screams at me and walked out because I told him, I was like, I can call the owner and, and she can check the cameras and, you know. Let you know that you picked that 20 back up. He was like, fine, do it. And then walked out as soon as I dialed Sherry. And so Sherry picked up. And I was like, so this man just left butt. And sure (laughs) enough, she called me back and she was like, yeah, so he picked a 20 back up. I was like, yeah, I know. And then, Madeline, the second part of the story. Oh, yeah. And then I think it was the day after. This is really the who does that moment. Yeah, I I was closing up the shop. So this was maybe 7.30 on a Saturday. Yeah. Um, and as I'm locking the door to leave, like, open signs are off, mannequins are in, lights are off. Door is locked. My sunglasses are on, my bag is in my hand, I am leaving out of here, and he runs into me as I'm closing the door, he's like, y'all closed? I was like, I don't, I don't know if your eyes work, but yes, we are closed. 
And he's and he starts like going on and on about how he needs to return something. We don't do returns. And yeah, for, first of all, we don't. You know, all sales are final because the nature of the business. But as he's rambling, I notice he's wearing those red shoes with the fake water droplets on them, and I'm like, oh my god, this is the guy that Nina was talking about. Because of course I told her this story. And so I let him finish his his sob story, and I'm like, sir. Even if we did returns, you did not pay full price for these shoes. Like, so, you robbed us. Yeah, so we will not be doing any business with you in the future. He was like, no, no, y'all gave me a condition. I got foot fungus now. And I said, sir, that's not possible. You've been wearing them for one day, and if they were that dirty, we would not have sold them. We don't even take shoes that have marker on the outside of them. Much less shoes that are ripped up and nasty on the inside of them. I mean, we take care of our stuff, but... Well, we only buy things that are in good condition. Yeah, and then again, then he starts going on about the white powder, and I realize it's not only the same guy that robbed you, but the same guy that my manager called a crackhead several months back, and I was like, wow, this is just a whole problem, isn't it? Like and I said, sir, the fuck away from me. all sales are final and we're closed for the day. And he was like, no, 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 I paid full price for these. I need my money back. And I was like, we have you on camera. Stealing. Picking up the $20 bill. And he's like, no, no, that girl was trifling with me. She's lying. I definitely was uh, a bit trifled. I mean, I would have been trifled too. It was a trifling, it was a trifle. It was a trifling morning. It was a trifling situation. And, um... I just started walking away. I was like, I can't deal. And so he, like, huffs and, like, leaves me alone. And as soon as he's gone, I turn the corner and just burst out laughing. That I'm Like, he he stole these shoes. Well, paid I mean, that's karma. If he did get foot fungus. I hope he did get foot fungus. He's probably just on crack. But (laughs) I hope he did get a fucking foot fungus. You know what will give you foot fungus? Crack. (laughs) (laughs) You know what will give you foot fungus is dirty ass socks. I bet you that man... Yes. I don't even know. It's, I bet you he only has, like, one It's hard to tell if some of these people are homeless or just, or, I don't even or know. Or just nasty? Or just on drugs or if they're a hipster. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know. So, I'm, I'm sure this man was wearing the same pair of socks for, like, uh, a billion years in a row. I mean, so. that's bad. Like, I feel bad for him in these other I don't feel bad. Because but... he, he had the money. He had the cash. God knows how he had the cash. Mm. But I was like, you're wearing a perfectly fine pair of shoes. There was nothing wrong with his shoes. I was like, so why did you come in here and try to buy shoes you can't afford? I don't know. Aspirational. I guess just for the job you, you want. You want, not the job you have. Yeah, exactly. I guess, I guess you didn't really have a job. So anyway, at Lucky, we also get proposition to purchase quite a few strange things. Well, no, so, so bear in mind, I don't know if we made this clear, we are a clothing store. Clothing a vintage accessories. vintage clothing store. Things, jewelry belts, ties, shoes, clothing, jewel, though. yeah, gloves, hats, so things you can wear. And we've compiled to the best of our ability a so list. Just a small list. A kind of comprehensive small baby mini comprehensive Granted, list. Granted, we've we've worked here for less than a year. And this this business has been open for almost 20. Yeah. So I'm sure this is not as comprehensive not, as it could be. Yeah. Um, so the other day, uh, a man walked in and asked me, because we buy clothes off the street, just like a Plato's closet. We purchase from the public, or, yeah. Or like a rag Like, people bring us their stuff, we go through it and let them know if we want anything. Mm-hmm. Um, this man walked in and said, and holds up a, a, a little Coca-Cola-figured salt and pepper shaker. There were little Coke bottles, but there were salt where and pepper in that, shakers. Where in our store did he see home goods for sale? I don't... I don't know. Do we look like... But he was like... We are not goodwill. Do y'all buy these? And I was like, absolutely not, sir. <laughs> and he was like, well, who would? And I was like, I have no idea. Who who would buy I was like, a used salt and pepper shake? I was like, take them to an antique store, maybe? Donate them to Goodwill? Like, if I they're even valuable. You. I was like, they're just... They're salt and pepper shakers. So, okay. There, that's one checked off the list. For me, someone came in and tried to sell me a tennis racket. And the first thing he says, he slaps it on the counter. He's like, here you go. It's a, it's a Wimbledon. There's nothing wrong with it. And, that, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was like, that may be true, but we don't. So I was like, sir, this is a clothing store. And he looked at me and he was like, what's wrong with it? I was like, 
there's nothing wrong with it, but it's a tennis racket. I can't buy it from you. And he said, come on, man. I just got out of jail. Cut me a deal. I was like, it's not my fault that you were in jail. And somehow acquired a perfect Wimbledon tennis racket. But Nina, there's nothing wrong with it. Come on, man. What's wrong with it? <laughs> and yeah, thankfully he left and didn't bother me anymore. Um... But then, our, I don't think we were there for this, but our manager... No, she sent us a text. Yeah, our manager texts us, because we have a lovely group chat. There's only, a, there's a whole four employees. Not even. Three Not employees even. There's and like an three owner. and a half. There's the owner and then the three employees, so... The owner, the manager, and then me and Nina. That's it's it. A, it's a tight-knit group. Yeah. Um, a female-owned and operated. Anyway, someone tried to sell her a gas can. Like a canister, like a one-gallon canister that holds gasoline. I wonder if it's the same guy. Because none of us have all been if there at the same time. If he had just gotten out of jail, there's no way. Maybe that's why he went to jail. I'm kidding. <laughs> For beating someone with a gas can? <laughs> For beating someone with a tennis racket. Maybe that was the murder. I'm kidding. Um. Um. So, yeah. Uh, an so, she, well, gas- she refused, obviously. And then yeah. he called her cheap. <laughs> <laughs> she said, he, he said, you got him, cheapskate. <laughs> Oh my god. Won't buy my goods because I'm black. How mu- how much would you, you pay for an empty gas can? Dude, I'm sure it's like, like three dollars. I'm sure it's three dollars to buy from Walmart. Like so then you give them like fifty okay. cents. So how about this? If the retail selling price that's redundant. If the retail price of a perfectly <laughs> untouched gas can is three dollars, at Lucky we would have to sell it for half of that, which is what? One fifty. And Which so means, so what is one third, third of one fifty? Like thirty cents. Yeah, so well, that's, that's how much I guess it's a third of a dollar. That's five cents. One dollar and fifty cents. So that's six like, quarters. Like Forty-five cents. So it would be fifty cents. Fifty cents. Oh, I don't right. know. I can't do math. Thirty percent. If you split, wait. If you split it in threes. I don't know why you think I, I can calculate numbers. Someone let us know in the I'm comments really flattered. what a 30% of $1.50 is, please. So it's $1, which is four quarters, and 50 cents, which is two quarters. That's six quarters. All right, so, so two you get quarters a third of, that, of those quarters. Which would be 50 cents. Well, then you get a whole 50 cents for this goddamn Yeah, because 15 can. divided by 3 is 5. I, I, okay. Anyway, we're moving on. Okay, okay. My point on. is... The cash that we give people that sell to Lucky is one third of what we think we can sell it for in the shop. So this man would only have gotten fifty cents for that gas, Had we gas taken station. It? Had we taken it. But just wrapping up here, some other highlights. A man came in and tried to sell me baby wipes, and he was like, "Y'all, y'all do hygiene." No. And I didn't know what to say because I was like, "I mean, yes, but we're hygienic people." Well, yes, but actually, no. <laughs> but actually, not in the store. <laughs> We don't sell hygiene Let's Let's products. open up a bootleg CVS where we sell used <laughs> hygiene Used products. baby wipes only. Yeah, and then the last thing on the list, which is my personal favorite. I think this was the same day that someone tried to sell me baby wipes. This man came in real confident, like all smiles, super charming. And so already I'm like, all right, what the fuck does he want? I hate when people walk directly um, to the counter and you're like, and, what can and I they're, do? And they're, all, and they're cheesing real hard. I'm like, I, mean, I can't wait to say no to you. <laughs> <laughs> and he places the stack of canvases on the counter and he's like, pick your favorite, bring it home, it's yours. I was like, excuse me? He's like, come on, I've sold art to you guys before. I was like, sir. We have terrible art and lucky, just to preface. Yeah. There are some terrible ass canvas paintings in the store. That I'm pretty sure Jen got. I don't want. I don't want to name names. Sorry. Um. um the old man. Uh. Who has she rest terrible in peace. taste. She's um, not dead. So this guy places his canvases on the counter. And I'm like, all right, whatever. I'll go through them. And I make clear to him, I'm like, I can't buy these from you. And he's like, well, come on, just look through them. Maybe you'll want one for your house. I was like, I don't know about that. And he was like, come on, do you you like art, right? And that's I was why like, there's three artists that live in this house. I just want to be like, if only he knew. That I've been studying at a private fine art college for four years, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say that. I go through the pictures, and they are just god awful, lopsided portraits of Billie Holiday, no, Kurt Cobain, <gasps> Michael Jackson. Like they're real bad, like terrifying. 
And, and then some of them are just, like, kind of sad, abstract squiggles, like that sponge oh, lady. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where she dips the sponge in different colors, and she's like, ooh, wow, and she makes all these weird noises. Fuck. That's what they looked at. Okay. In conclusion, don't, don't try to sell me your bad art, because... Okay, but even don't try to rent anything? This guy came in... Rent? And, listen. What? This guy came in... And was like, I'm a photographer. Oh, no. And Everyone like, I'm in doing... Atlanta is a photographer. I know. I don't feel special at all. <laughs> you are. You're studying um, photography. Yeah, but every white girl with a camera calls themselves you're a You're paying a lot of money to be a white girl with a camera, so give yourself a break. You're, you're right. Um, anyway, this man comes in and he says, I'm a photographer. White male photographer. He's like, I need a woman's jean jacket. And I was like, or no, he's a leather jacket. And I was like, I don't think we have any, but... Go, feel free to look through our jackets. And he was like, no, there's not one. I was like, well, the men's is back there. I am think I think there's one over there. there. We have a couple of good men's leather jackets. Yeah. They're not cheap. Yeah, yeah, No, they're not cheap because they're real leather, by the way. Um, and he was like, well, this is the closest one to, to what I want. It's not leather. It was a brown vintage suede jacket. Mm. Like real suede. Very the one nice. with the fringe? No, no, no. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. No, sense. that is a women's jacket. Anyway, keep talking. Um, but it was a brown men's suede, like, bomber jacket. And he was like, I want it, but I just need it for, like, a photo shoot. So is there any way I can rent it? I was like, eh, no. Do we look at the costume library? Actually, like, yes, probably we do, but. I was like, mm, no, we don't really do that. And he was like. Wait, wait. This reminds me of the time someone called and asked if we sold prop guns. Oh, the prop guns! Because, yeah, we would have that. A I wish. clothing store. I'll pitch it. Guns. I'll pitch it to, to the owner. Yeah. Um, so this man, like, sits there and harasses me. Come on, you can't rent me the jacket. Come on, I'll pay. I'll pay full price, and then you can just give me, like, half back whenever I come tomorrow. That's, And no. return it. I'm like, sorry, sir, we Hard don't do no. returns. Like, we don't rent our clothing, we don't do returns. If you want um, to use it for your photo shoot, then buy it. And yeah. he did not like that. He was like, well, if that's how she wants to do business, and gave me back the jacket and, like, left. And I was like, little does he know we have an in-house photographer to do all of our ads. Because he was like, I have substantial Instagram followers, and I, um... Yeah, I'm sure we'll put that on your tombstone, sweetie. Yeah. He was like, I'll, I'll, I'll let you use the picture, blah, blah, blah. I was like, we don't care. You said that? Yeah. Oh I was like, I don't God. think that's going to make any difference to your case. He's like, okay. How old was he? Old. He was an old white guy. Oh, God. He probably photographed like her aged. naked with a leather jacket draped over her shoulders. But anyway, wrapping up here with more gross... Oh, the perfume gross, guy. This gross needs to be the last stories. one. Yeah. He's so good. We're, at, we're almost pushing 40 minutes here. Listen, the... the but we didn't... We, you'll want to hear this. We recorded late this week, so that's our little apology, a little, I guess. Uh, our little apology. Our bonus 10, 10 minutes. <laughs> of nothing. I know that's really. not what you want at all, but... But this man uh, comes in. He's got, like, a little cart of, like, saran-wrapped new stuff. And there's, like, different box sizes, different logos, and so... He comes and he goes, hey, so he seems a real nice guy. I was like, hello there. You know, just trying to be normal. See, they're always so happy. I know. And he walks in. He was like, listen, um, uh, these ladies next door bought some of these. I just thought, y'all might like some too. And um, um, sorry, distracted. Uh, he was like, um, so I can sell you these for like $10 a piece. And he pulls out a box with some, like, a box of, like, perfume. Was um, it, like, real perfume or, like, mall perfume? Like, mall perfume. Okay. It wasn't any brand I w- would have recognized. So it wasn't. It was but, alcohol, basically. Probably. I mean, it was, like, saran wrapped. It was, like, a brand. It seemed like a pyramid scheme. Like, some guy had gotten <laughs> all these from, like, some kind of probably uh, Mary Kay vendor and had to sell them now. Is that was, considered soliciting? Yes. I don't know. Keep keep going. Um, if you're a lawyer, let us know about soliciting laws. Um, at Jake Greenberg. Ah! Okay, keep talking. You did it. You did it. Um, sorry, I named a name. You named a name. Um, but <clears throat> uh, he then goes on to say, "You're so beautiful," and I was like, "Oh great, thank you. oh brother." He was like, "Do you have a boyfriend?" I was like, "Yeah." He goes, "Can I take you out on a date?" I was like, "No." How does how does one thing? <laughs> I was oh like, I was like, for a matter of fact, 
no, because I just said I have a boyfriend. He goes, what if I kiss you? And I was like, I was like, no, sir, I just said I have a boyfriend. I don't think he'd like that very much. Why didn't you press the panic button? (laughs) That's what I wanted to do. Because it didn't seem threatening. I was just like Mm. behind the counter and he was just like being real nice. What if I kiss you? And I was like, please leave me alone. Ew, what Um, if you die? What if, what if you go? What if you go get run over by a truck on Ponce? That would yeah. make me happy. I'm like, what if you just step into the middle of the road and wait for something to hit you? Yeah. Um, but he continues to say, remember, he he tried to sell me this perfume for ten dollars. That's a lot <laughs> for, for someone that doesn't sell perfume in our store. I was like, first of all, we don't sell perfume. I can't purchase this from yeah, you. We don't Second sell all, cosmetics. He was like, he was like, ten dollars for this box of perfume. Um, I'm assuming the box had a bottle in it. Who knows? Um. But probably of his own spit or something. Probably his cum. Ew, just, just, that's just a lot that. of cum. Give it to a sperm bank if you want money. Um, but he then said, "This is the best part." He was like, "Hey, how about I give you this bottle of perfume for free, and you sit on my face?" Ew, ew. And I was like, "Sir, that will definitely not be happening. Why don't you head on out that door and try to make some sales elsewhere?" Oh my god, <laughs> who does that? Who does that? All right, guys, we love you. Good night. That's it. <laughs> um, and if you subscribe to our channel, I'll give you a hug. We'll, we'll give you a free bottle of perfume <laughs> to sit on our faces. Good night. <laughs> Bye.